Uh oh, hurry, come up and sign in. Put it over here so that people can't see. Okay. You can do it, have faith. Okay, so today um, we are going to start our new unit, which is rates. Um, I forgot to put the quiz up. I'll put it up later. Um, you'll have time to do it another day. So we're going to go through different things with rates. So if you would remember, the end of the term is coming up. Days till the end of term. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. So make sure you're getting your grades up, get everything in, um, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to put that down, and I'm going to get this other one up. And we're going to go into equilibrium and rates. So this is how fast things go. I think I need to give you your notes. Okay, so here is your note packet for this one. If you want to come in traveling these other clubs with me, you can. I don't need to exercise you. Okay, fine. I just like the. That's totally finish. Okay. All right. Here we go. So equilibrium and rates. Um, just has a lot to do with the state core. We were working with several different things. Um, we're going to be doing an equilibrium lab. Oh, she's just scared. <laughs> Braden, all right. Oh, it's right here. Sorry. I just finished passing it out and turned it was the other way while you came in, I guess. And I'll get you in when you turn this around. Um, we've got a few things we're going to do. Make sure you stay up with us. We'll be having fun. So not all reactions go to completion. We've been writing reactions with one-way arrow, reactants, to products, and that's all they go. That's not really true. Some reactions go back and forth, and I can put pressure or a, a force on one side to make it go the other way, um, and I get what's known as a reversible reaction. That's why we get this two-sided arrow. Um, and we get where it comes to an equal rate. An equal rate does not necessarily mean equilibrium. Equilibrium means there's no change in the amounts. So everybody thinks, oh, at equilibrium, they're the same. It's not necessarily true. At equilibrium, they're just not changing. Okay, all right. So we're also going to be talking about that heat can be a reactant or a product. So I can put heat in to get a reaction started, or a reaction can give off heat. So I want you to look at this and see if you can determine where on these graphs um, it becomes equilibrium. Remember, equilibrium is not changing. So looking at the top graph to the right, at what time? is equilibrium first reach. Okay. So we're going to raise our hands and see what time you think it is. Is it A, 80? Is it B, 24? Is it C, 40? Is it D, 120? I only have two people vote. I thought you were just reading off the answers. Oh, no. Let's try again. Let's vote again. So A, 80. Got one for 80. B, 24. Two. C, 40. Three. D, 120. Sean, put your phone away. Okay, you didn't vote because you didn't know what you were doing. Okay, so you got to pay attention. We're starting a new unit. Get the earphones out. Put the phone away. Okay. All right, so what was the correct answer was A, 80. Okay, because at, by the time I hit 80, it started to flatten out. Okay, so when it starts to get flat, that means it's not changing. Okay, when I have a slope of zero, it's not changing. All right, let's look at number two. So we're looking at this graph right here. Looking at the middle graph to the right, at what time is equilibrium reached? So look at the graph, decide what one you think is the answer as I read it off, raise your hand. Is it at 10? Nobody. 20? 40? 
40. Okay, and 60. Okay, it is at 40, because at 40 it started to flatten out. You could actually um, argue it's about 35, because there's a little bit of slope here on 30 for the red, but by 35 they're both pretty flat. But that wasn't one of the choices, so good choice. Okay, third graph, looking at the bottom graph. Which one represents when equilibrium is being reached? Take a second. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40. Yes, so you get the idea now? Where you where you close? Ah, awesome. And I forgot that these actually went up there. Okay, so got a little video here for you to watch about it. Um, remember I told you that you could um, put a stress on a reaction to go one way or another, and this is a way to remember it. To and fro, forwards and back, simultaneous it flows. Reactants becoming products at the same rate reverse goes. Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier is all about balance. So if you think about a teeter-totter, you're looking at balance. The um, graph that's on the, on the board right now is one that everybody thinks, oh, that's what equilibrium is. 
where it all becomes one. Remember I showed you in the other two graphs that and the other three graphs that doesn't always come down to one thing. A lot of times it just comes to where it's not changing. Okay, it is like a, a balance, a seesaw. If I put more on one side, it has to shift to make it equal again. It's trying to always be equal. And that's what Le Chantelier basically says. So, this is the way that, that helps me to remember something that help, help you to remember this way. Uh, I use arrows. The arrows are always pointing down, okay? So if I'm adding reactants, I'm adding things from the top, I'm putting it down. And it's like I'm adding a pile. And I now have a pile over here and I have to even it out. So it would shift that way, away from the pile. So it would go across the arrows away. If I add things on this side, again, it has to shift away from this pile, but it has to cross the arrows. So it would shift that way. Okay? So that's if I'm adding or reactants or products. If I'm removing reactants or products, so if I'm removing them, I put the arrow down here. It's like I'm digging a hole. So now I've got to smooth things over to fill the hole. So I'm going to move things across the arrow to get to arrows, to get to my arrow. So I have to go this way. So the reaction is going to shift towards the reactants. Okay? If I take it out of the products, again it has to come, it has to go through the arrows to get here, and it has to go in the same direction. So I'm going to be shifting towards the products if I'm taking out of the products. Okay? So, I think we've covered everything that's up there, yes? Adding or removing. So just remember, if you put the arrow in facing down, if I'm adding it, it goes on top. If I'm taking it away, it goes on the bottom. It'll help me know which way the reaction is changing. Now, temperature, we have to look for this or heat. Sometimes I'll just put heat. It can be on the reactant side or the product side. And this is where we said shift um, uh, with in endothermic and exothermic. And uh, that's a lot of remembering. Exothermic just means the heat's on the product side. Endothermic means it's on the reactant side. But if I put in, just like I did before, if I put in heat, I'll put an arrow in above wherever the heat is, I'm going to shift away from it and across the arrows. So it'll tell me which way it's going. If I, this out. if I take out heat, again, I've got to shift across the arrows, but I've got to get to the arrow. So I'm going to be going this way. It's going to shift this way. The next thing we need to talk about is pressure and volume. Pressure and volume um, basically relate to gases, because that's the only thing that can be squished or unsquished. Okay, so we look in the reaction for what's gases. And then we look for the number of moles. That's the number in front of each of these. So my reactant side here, I have a 1 plus a 3, giving me 4 moles of gases. On my product side, I have a 1 plus a 1, giving me 2 moles of gases. Well, the more favorable it for when I was trying to squish things is the smallest side, right? So if I'm increasing pressure, so pressure is increasing, it goes to the side with less moles of gas. So it would go towards my products here. That's for increasing pressure. If I was decreasing pressure, then it would go to the side with more. Okay? Any questions with that? Okay. So let's practice some. If I add CO, I'm going to add CO. Which way is the reaction going to go? With your fingers, show me. Yeah, it's going to go to the product side. So I can just say towards product. All right, now if I remove H2, that's like putting an arrow below H2, which way is it going to go? Show me again with your fingers. 
Good, it's toward the reactant. So we're going to go here and put a reactant. Sean, you going to stay with us? Okay, um, if I add H2O, putting stuff in right here, which way is it going to shift? I have two fingers. Which way is it going to shift if I put in H2O? There's three. Yep. It's going to go back toward the reactant, so we'll go away from that pile. All right, what if I, let me erase some of these now here so it doesn't get crowded. If I take out CH4, methane gas. Good, it's going towards the product, so it's got to fill that hole I just made. All right, this is a little bit more work here. Add pressure to the system. So that means I'm increasing pressure. Well, that means I've got to go back and look at the number of moles. So 1 and 3 is 4. 1 and 1 is 2. I need to make sure they're gases because if they're liquids and solids, they don't count. So if I add pressure, which way am I going to go? Good. The side that has the least amount, so I'm going to head to the products. I'm going to increase pressure. All right, what if I add heat? I add heat, which way are you going to go? Good, to the reactants. I'm going to go away from that heat. I just like piling it on. Okay, how do we feel about this? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways? Thumbs sideways for the most part? Okay, all right. So we're going to do a little bit of an equilibrium lab. We're going to take and um, um, put stuff away for a second. Just leave it off to the side. Um, I need you to come follow me and grab some stuff. So here they come. The long part. You go fill the water um, buckets with water not half full, a little less than half full. What were you thinking? Oh, that's cool. Okay, here's the deal. Oh, we just want to ask you on the 24th and 25th, we have an explorer. I think the 26th I'm at school. Okay. If I don't finish. Yeah, I've got that at school. But okay. I can move that if I need to. No. It's these two days. We're just looking. 24th and 25th. Uh huh. 26th and it's. Yep. It's the 24th and 25th. Those two days, we're looking at having those little first graders come through. If it's going to be too much, we'll ask somebody different. But if you would. We can do it. Okay. The uh, 24th would be the better day. 
Well, well there's for it's both. both. Yeah, it's, it's for both days. Yeah, okay. both days. Right. Two different schools are coming for both days. But you only you're not going to see all of the groups. We we have so many kids in the schools now. We had to break them in half. It's primary, right? Yeah, it's first graders. Because we're going to do pre with them. Yeah. But the second day is chemistry and biotech, so maybe we'll have a look at microscopes. Perfect. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever works right. for you. Because the, the chemistry wouldn't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. And you can um, select a few students to have for the whole time. For the whole time. For, to help you. Yeah. To you help have you. have somebody that you okay. want to have to help you. But we'll, we'll send out an email telling you to send an excuse list to Erica. Okay. And so. All right, I will ask tomorrow then. Okay. Okay, it doesn't need to be half full, so just a little bit under half. You don't want it totally full. Okay, you need a ruler for your thing, and you need to be next to somebody except Sean, and make it be really full. So he's got full. Okay, you want to be right close to whoever you're going to partner with. So your big um, ice cream buckets need to be right next to each other. So yeah, you gotta have one with a large beaker, one with a small beaker. You can switch it around if you don't have one next to it. And you gotta be less than half. So if you're more than half a be uh, thing full, you're in trouble. You gotta dump some out. Okay, so this is just gonna be really, really quick. Okay, we're not gonna grab it, we're not gonna do anything. But what I want you to do is put them right next to each other. And I want you to sort of look at what your original depth is for each of you. So less than half full each. Okay, so you're going to read how deep it is. Maybe write it down somewhere so you remember it. Okay, and then we're going to have a contest. Okay, I could have you, and I do with the um, CE Chem um, and other chemistries, I have them actually graph the whole thing. Where did I start all along the way? So we get the graphs like we just saw, okay? But what I want you to do is for every dip, one of you make, okay, so you're going to go dip, switch, dip, switch, okay? And you're going to do it as fast as you can. And you're going to have one minute, and you're going to try and fill the other person's bucket up. Okay? You ready? So one in each one. I'm just going to flip like this. Okay, ready? Set. i got to get to a point on the clock where I can do this easily. Go! Try and get it as full as you can each dip. And you can't do more dips than they do. Oh, no, you have to, each dip has to be the same. <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> Just 
Yeah, the girls didn't have watch out. <laughs> switching beakers and see what happens. Okay, ready? We'll go for 30 seconds and go. <laughs> They're really cleaning my desk up a bit. <laughs> changing the amount both sides, right? So depending on what you do, you can force it the action one way or another. Okay? All right, go ahead and dump the water out and, and just sort of um, make it so they'll dry over there on the drying rack. <laughs> and I've got more paper towel as we do. We're supposed to do it really clean my desk well. <laughs> Just put them over there to dry. Yeah, I can start stacking. There's enough room for it. Okay, so that little activity, we could have stressed it by taking some water out of one of them. We could have stressed it by um, changing you both to the same size speakers. We could have done a lot of different things to finally do um, that out. What I want you to get out of that is that it's an equilibrium. It's not going to. It's not static. It's not going to stay the same. Okay. All right. 
right, we're going to go on with notes. Does anybody need some more paper towels? Okay, we're going to need more, I can get some more paper towels. Okay. So here was um, another way to look at it. We had cans. Um, we'd measure them. When both participants were tra uh, transversing, transferring the water, what happened to the amounts in the large um, the bucket with a large amount of water? So what happened when, when you had the large beaker and you're moving stuff and you had more water in your side? You lost water real quick. You lost water real quick, right. And when the transferring container has changed, if I had changed it, we didn't do that. So I changed when we got to the point where you had the big one and the other person had the small one, and we switched it, what would have happened? Sort of what we did with the beakers. It would have reversed, right? When we reach that dynamic, dynamic equilibrium, that means if we just kept going and going for five, ten minutes the same way, nothing would have changed. It would have stayed low on one side, high on the other side, no, no matter what you did. Because the little beaker could only put so much in, and the big beaker could only grab so much out, right? And you got to the point where what you were transferring from the one side to the other side was exactly the same. And that's what equilibrium is, when what's going forward and what's going backwards is the same. And so it looks like I'm not doing anything, but you were actively moving stuff, right? And in a reaction, that happens too. You're actively changing things from reactants to products, but you get to a point where it's the same amount that's being changed. Okay. Um, and that's that. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you, well, that's interesting. Oh, somebody got the heat on on that one. That's not good. Um, we're going to boil water. Yeah, we're going to boil some water here. We need to grab some more water. Since that one evaporated out, that was not good. <laughs> it decorated out. Did you see what this um, voice to text thing that I'm using is not always accurate, and it's what I'm saying. Decorate it up. <laughs> All right, so those of you on the very front, I put some um, goggles out. When we talk about rates of reaction, we're talking about how fast things occur. And up here, I've got some stirring pot plates. I'm going to make these ones. I don't want those ones. To, okay, I don't want these. These are going to be my cold ones. Whoops, not going to be stirring rod. Stirring rod. This one I am going to paint. This one I'm going to heat. So we'll do the cold ones first, so let the hot ones have a chance to um, heat up. Put my glasses in here. And what we're going to do, come on, stir and heat it. I have faith in you. Come on. Just thinking about it. I'll be cleaning up up here pretty soon, too. You'll we'll see. All right, there we go. All right, so what I've got is just basically water, okay, distilled water. The first two on the right are on your left here are cold. These ones are going to be heating up. And I've got some dry ice cream. Because dry ice is kind of fun. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens when we put a chunk of it into cold water. Okay, I'm just going to put a big chunk. But then my stirring rod's not very happy with me right now. Okay. 
these have had enough time to heat up and let them heat this new. I should have that steaming already. Um, but we can see, you know, some dry ice. What is dry ice? Does anybody know? You don't know? All it is is carbon dioxide that's frozen. Frozen carbon dioxide, that's what it is. And carbon dioxide sublimes, meaning it goes directly from solid to gas. And that's why you move dry ice out, and when it evaporates, there's no puddle. That's why they call it dry ice. Whereas if you put ice out, and you left it, you have a puddle of water. So that's why they call it dry ice. Um, I'm going to put a big piece in the hot one here, and then we'll see what's changing. A little bit different, okay? It, and it's not as hot as it could be. So you see what's happening. Okay, difference. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so temperature affects how fast a reaction goes, but um, particle size does here. So I'm going to smash this down and make it very fine particles. And we'll put it in the cold. Okay. I not. Okay, but it will watch and we'll see what happens. I had about the same amount of dry ice that I put in there. One thing that you notice with this one, I don't know if you can see it, if you're up close you can. On the outside of the dry ice here, ice is starting to form on the cold water. And so that's actually protecting that big chunk of dry ice so that it doesn't evaporate. So when you have dry ice and you put it in water, it forms ice around it, and the dry ice is safe, unless it has a hole in it. Okay? I'm going to cut up some more. Uh-oh. Looks like I have a problem with this one. It's going to bust. We'll grab it again. Is we're going to do two 
do exper or three experiments. You get to choose what you're going to test. So, um, hopefully we can get this up. It will be very slow. All right. So, we're going to be doing a lab on reaction rates. Okay, if you were traveling in a car and you were going um, 60 miles per hour, you could find out how long it would take you to get 300 miles. And you just take a 300 divided by 5 and you get that would take what? Or 300 miles and it would um, divide by 60, you get 5 hours. Or you could take 300 divided by 5 and find out how many miles per hour you're going. That is a rate. So when we talk about rate in chemistry, we're talking about how fast something might go in a reaction. So think about rust. How fast does rust happen? What could I put if I said the rate of rust is 0.5? What could I use as my units? What? Okay, I could put something days, but what is the 0.5 of what? I could put days here, but what would be 0.5? Square inches. Okay, um, but what do we usually use in chemistry? Oh, moles. Moles, we could put moles, but that's going to be hard to measure. Grams. So I said grams per day. 0.5 grams per day would be good. Okay, so I'm going to show you these three different labs. And in these three different labs, I want you to be thinking about... So the labs are on the front here, but on the second page here, I want you to be thinking about which ones you could change in concentration, which ones you could use to change particle size, which ones you could use to do temperature. And then I'm going to have you, so be on this page, and as you're on this page, write down, oh, I could use A, B, and C for this. And then I want you to choose which one you're going to change. Okay, so I'm going to go over this next page and sort of go through it with you. The first one we're going to do is sodium sulfide with sulfuric acid. Well, you're going to do this in the petri dish. And this is the reaction, and it's given to you. I've got to open up these petri dishes. Sorry, I haven't done that yet. And this is a reaction with gases. Okay, I'm trying to find a white piece of paper so I can put down and have a white background. So we're going to put um, some chemical inside and out, some indicator, which I forgot to grab, so I'm going to grab real quick. And then on the other side, inside the petri dish, we're going to put sodium sulfide and sulfuric acid. And that's going to make sulfur dioxide. And it's going to change the color of the indicator. Okay, so here we go. As I make this, as I do this, first thing I'm going to do is take an indicator. I'm going to put a little bit inside on one side, one drop, and one or two drops on the outside so I can have a, that didn't drop very well, but that I, that I can compare to. Okay, I'm going to set that off to the side for a minute. I'm actually going to get a tissue and re-drop that so it doesn't drop weird. There. Okay, this one's not dropping real great. Then I'm going to grab my, no, not hydrochloric, my sulfuric acid, three molar, and my sodium sulfite. Now, I can change the amount of each one I have, but it always has to add up to the same number of drops. So to change concentration, I could choose five drops or six drops would be easy. Because then I could say, oh, I'm going to do three drops and three drops. I'm going to do three drops and two drops. And then I'm going to do one drop and four drops. Because you're going to do four, three trials to show what's happening. And then I could do one drop and or four drops and one drop. Okay? I'm just going to do some drops so you can see what's happening. And I'm on a little bit of a slant here. I'm going to do two drops of the sodium sulfite. And this is the tricky part. When you go to put the other one, you've got to have your... Um, lid ready to put on. And like I said, for some reason this is not going well on the lid here. So 
So I'm ready. I'm going to put the two drops. I'm going to put this over the top so I can still see what's happening inside. I've got the green on the outside. I've got this. Now, if you notice, this is starting to turn red, okay, or orange. And as it turns, I can say, okay, when we first see orange, I'm going to call it. Or when the whole thing goes red, that's when I'm going to call it. So I've got to make a decision. When am I going to say it's done? And I've got to be consistent in all four trials. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this whole thing over to the seat, not opening it until you get over the seat, because this is a gas. And if you wear contact, it's not going to be happy with you. You're going to turn on the water. You're going to rinse off the lid and open the lid underneath the water running. So any gas that gets there will be caught and turned into liquid. Okay? So that's, a, that's an important thing for this. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to dry this out really well. And then I'm going to go on with my next trial. And it's very, very, very important that you dry it really well. Because if you don't, the gas is sucked into the liquid and you don't get the same results. Okay? So you're going to dry that really well in between. Okay, that was A, number one, or A. So what could you change in that? Temperature? How could I change temperature? Well, I have some ice cream lids out there. You can put some ice on ice cream lids, put the petri dish on ice cream lid of ice, and the temperature will change. I could do it at room temperature. I could take that ice cream lid and put some warm water in there, and then set it in and see what happens. Okay, so I could change temperature. I can change concentration. We already talked about that. I can do five drops, where two drops. I can do one drop to four drops, two drops to three drops, three drops to two drops, four drops to one drop. So minimum I have to do is three trials, but I could change that up, okay? I don't want to really go over five or six drops. I could even do it with four. One and three, two and two, three and one. Okay, does that make sense? But I'm always having four drops. Could I change particle size on this one? No, this one is not a good one for particle size. Okay, we're going to go to the next one, which is with um, reacting magnesium with hydrochloric acid. On this one, we're using a well plate. We're using hydrochloric acid. We're using um, ribbon, ma a magnesium ribbon, and distilled water. And I don't have the distilled water, so I'm just going to get it straight. So on this one, I'm going to bring it in so you can see just one well. So you're going to choose um, three wells. And you're going to decide how much am I going to have as my total. Because remember, I always have to have a total. So 20, 30, 40 drops, those are good. Anything less than 20, probably not good because there's not enough there. Okay? So you're going to fill your... Whoops, that's not the right thing. Oh, excuse the right thing. You're going to fill your well with however many drops. I can change concentration by changing the number of drops of hydrochloric acid versus the number of drops of distilled water. Okay, but I always have the same amount. So I'm just going to pretend like it counted, and there's my count. Okay? You're going to be a little bit more consistent. Now, the reason I did that is because I want to show you the um, experiment itself, and I'm not really worried about timing it or anything. But you're going to time it. You'll be given a piece of magnesium ribbon that's about as wide as the well. You're going to need to divide it into three pieces. Okay? So, what you're going to do is fold it and fold it or cut it. That will work too. But this works really well. It just folds and then you can break it off. Okay? Now, if I wanted to change the amount of magnesium ribbon particle size, I could cut that into smaller particles. I could do one where it's whole, one where I cut it in half, one where I cut it as many pieces as I can get. Okay? But you're going to have to have it on a piece of paper or something so you can put it in. You're going to put it in, and you're going to watch it react. You're going to time how long it takes for it to react. Now, if you've diluted it more than, so if I did 20 drops, if I did 10 drops and 10 drops, it might, if I go less than that, if I go 15 drops of water and 5 drops of acid, it might not dissolve. So after 5 minutes, you're going to have to call it. Okay? But you want to wait until that magnesium ribbon is gone. Now I use just hydrochloric acid. You can see it's taking a little bit of time. 
Warning on this. This sort of spits out hydrochloric acid and some chlorine gas and hydrogen gas. So you need to sort of stay a little bit back from this. Okay? It's not like the other one where you have to go immediately and wash it, but it's, it's one that you just need to stay back away from. So it's finished and I'm done and I would record the time. Okay? You need to do at least three trials. All right, last one. The last one, we're using, um, let me zoom back out again. We're going to use some film canisters. If you ever took 35 milliliter film, these are film canisters. Okay, we're going to be using these. On the back, they have some marks. One fourth, one half, one third, or three fourths. I'll give you a hint. You'll want the water somewhere in between here. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Let's go back to this one. How can I change? Okay, so we talked about concentration. We talked about particle size. Can I change temperature on this one? Yes. Yeah, you can put this in an ice bath. You can put it in hot water. You can put it out on the room temperature. Okay, so now we're going this one. So this one you can change the amount of water, but that's not changing the concentration. So you've got to choose the amount of water to keep it consistent. Okay, on this one. So you either choose a fourth, you choose halfway between, which would be a third, or you choose a half. Okay, those are the ones I would choose. Then you are going to be given a full alpha seltzer. I did the, the no name brand because it was a lot cheaper. You're going to be given an alpha seltzer tablet. I can get this open, maybe. There we go. We'll just be given one. They come in packs of two, so you'll just be given one. My suggestion to you is take that one best as you can, split it in half, split it in half again, split it in half again. So you have four trials you can do with this one. Because oftentimes there's a dud. Okay? You're going to have ability to use the mortar and pestle like I had up there. So you can grind it into different pieces. You could take it and give one hole, you can hand break one in half, maybe hand break it as much as you can, and then powder the other one with the mortar and pestle. Okay, so you could change the particle size. I could change the temperature of the water I put it in. I could put it in hot, warm, cold, in between. Okay, I could, I could do the temperature. We're just going to really quickly, I'm just going to put some water in this, and I can't do it underneath, and you'll understand here in a minute why. Um, but we're going to be doing this outside. We're going to do it on a little curving in between um, the flower gardens and the grass. So there's a little um, cement curving. And you're going to do that with this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go out there and you're going to say, you're going to wear your glasses because you'll see why in a minute, and especially if you use hot water. You're going to take this and you're going to put it in the lid. And then you're going to say, okay, ready? And the partner's going to say, yeah. And you're going to say, time it. You can quickly put it upside down and move away. Now, what's going to happen is um, it's going to explode. When it explodes, you're going to want to count how many bricks high it went and how long it took to explode. Okay, we've actually got it to be really good, good, good one. It will actually hit the top of that one. <laughs> Actually, had almost the top. We've lost a couple over the top of the, the school. So, um, and you can see this still is bubbling. So it's got more than enough with a just a fourth of the tablet to make it go. Everybody else is like, "What if I use a full gun? Doesn't matter. It only uses a little bit of the fourth of the tablet to make it go. So that's why I said split it into four. <laughs> You'll understand if you use hot water why you don't want to do that. Okay. All right. We're going to try this again up here. So, okay. Let me go finish this first. Sorry. I get a little excited because I'm looking at the clock. All right. So you would have four other trials that you could do with that. So particle size on this one, temperature, concentration. Concentration really doesn't work on this one. So don't do concentration on this one. Okay. All right. So let's look at the rest of this. You're going to have to write up some procedures. So I've done it with you, and I've sort of given you a little picture on the front here to help you remember what where we're doing. Okay, you are going to decide what you're going to change. And then you are going to write it up. So 
the first one here. The effect of concentration. I wrote these really big, so hopefully you wouldn't get them mixed up. So what one did you pick for concentration? Somebody shout out which one they would have chosen for concentration. Magnesium. Okay, that's an easy one. So on the magnesium, I would go back here and, and say, oh, it's magnesium ribbon with hydrochloric acid. All right, I need a balanced chemical reaction. So what is magnesium? Mg. Plus, what's hydrochloric acid? And you can put this wherever you decided to use this. You don't have to use it for concentration. You could use it for something else. What's hydrochloric acid? HCl. It is. It's HCl. What type of reaction is this going to be? Element Sweet. compound. Yes. It, great. Single displacement. So here, magnesium and hydrogen are going to trade places. So magnesium is going to go with the chlorine. But magnesium is in the second column. It has a plus two charge, and chlorine just has a minus one charge. So we're going to need two chlorines to balance it out. Plus, hydrogen gets picked out by itself. But hydrogen is one of brown hipkel, which means it hangs around in pairs. So I need two of them. Now I need to go back and fix something to balance it. What do I need to do? I need to put a 2 in front of the HCl, right? So I have two hydro hydrogens and two chlorines on both sides. So the next thing that we need to do is write the problem. What is the problem? How does concentration affect reaction rate? Now, like I said, you don't have to use this one for this one. You could might have used this one for the temperature. You're going to do the same thing. How does temperature affect reaction rate? Okay. You're going to write a hypothesis. What's a hypothesis? Your guess about what's going to happen. So you're going to write that. Now we get down to here. How many remember what IV is? Good. Independent variable. What is that? It's what you change. Okay. So what am I changing? Concentration. So I'm going to write down concentration. What am I changing the concentration of hydrochloric acid? So I started with 3 molar hydrochloric acid, so I'm going to be changing the 3 molar hydrochloric acid. What's my dependent variable? Reaction rate. Reaction rate. Yeah, so time. So I'm going to put time here. For the one that we do the, um, the alka so you're going to have time and bricks. Because we're going to do height. So time and height. What are my holding constant? What things are you not changing? Right? Everything that has to do with the reaction that you're not changing. The number of total drops. The well that we're using. The chemicals that we're using. Blah, blah, blah. Molarity will work for this one because we're using a 3 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So we write 3 molar. When I get to the alpha seltzer, we're not using a concentration. We're just using a tablet and water. So there's no concentration, so you put none. So I'm whichever one you use for that. Now, procedure. You're going to tell me how to do this. How am I going to do this? So step one, what are my materials I need to gather? Step two, how am I going to do the first trial? How am I going to do the second trial? How am I going to do the third trial? Okay, and you're going to just walk me through what we did. The data table needs to be set up. So you need to say, okay, I know I'm going to need time, right? That's one of the things I know I'm going to need. But if I'm worried about concentration, then I'm also going to probably say number of drops of water versus number of drops of um, HCl, right? Because I'm not changing the amount of, of, of ribbon I put in. I'm just changing the concentration. And then you would put trial one, trial two, trial three, whatever, OK? Then you're also going to set up your graph. Your trials are always going to be along the x-axis. Your time and height are going to be around your y-axis. Okay. I don't know what my time is going to be, so I'm just going to put time, and then I'll make it so I can make a bigger graph as possible. Bar graphs are wonderful for this. Okay. So I can do trial one, and then do a bar graph. Trial two, do a bar graph. Trial three, do a bar graph. And I see really easy. Then you're going to say, oh, you know what? On trial whatever uh, for our analysis we spilled or it never went out. It never went all the way gone. So this is the max. 
I'm going to give a conclusion. My claim, did it follow my hypothesis? Was my claim correct? What's my evidence? What's my reason? Just short, one sentence each on these, okay? You have three of them to set up. So next time we'll be working on setting them up. The next time we'll be doing the up. Okay? Questions? Okay, so I'm going to let you do that, but before you go, I'm going to try this one more time to see what happens. So I'm going to do this one first. Make sure this is all. Okay, I'm going to do the hot one first. Ready? Ooh, that's better. Okay, I'm going to do the hot one for the hole. No. Notice what's happening to the gas. Okay. We already got the hot one for the house. We'll do another one for the cold. Notice the difference in the color of the gas. You see it? This one's really white. This one's more of a gray white. This one's really white. This one is set. That one is frozen to the bottom. <laughs> okay, look, this is almost all the way gone. I think we need to do it again. Right? I got dry eyes. You guys are really positive that, so I'm okay with it, right? Pastures, I do have pastures up on um, on your campus that you can watch. I do bigger beakers, but the bigger beakers you don't. So, how to use smaller beakers. 
All right, time's yours. So a little lecture next time, then we'll have some time to do you. Yes, and as soon as you get this passed off, your notes or your choice of what to do, then you get to play. But you will have next time for sure, and possibly part of the next time we come back. Thank you.